Hello and welcome to the new UK North American Guitar Showroom. Uh, we are with a very good friend of ours uh, and uh, we're having a catch up from when we last spoke, I think it was about six, seven months ago? Yeah, May. May, wow, how time has flown. Mr. John Stubbings, how are you? I'm fabulous to be here in su sunny, very sunny Hemel Hempstead. It is very sunny, yes, yeah. in bar number one, the yeah. acoustic room. Um, and this is uh, quite a, a great day because this is the first this is the first interview that I've done since we have had the move from London right, to the new here. place. Um, and the last interview we did was with Willie Porter, mm. which was which was really funny because as we did the interview, we were in the midst of the move, um, and instead of having the lovely sofa with beautiful instruments behind us, we were just sat on two red chairs. In an empty room. <laughs> With men taking cases out the door. Yeah, basically. Anyway, um, you very kindly came up to visit us today. Um, it has been a world... 22 minutes from London. I mean, it's hardly a long journey. Well, thank you so much, <laughs> sir. <laughs> and you picked me up at the station. Oh, the four minutes. What could be nicer <laughs> in four minutes? I'm here, and four minutes later, you bowl up. In the in the North American guitar limousine. Well, there you Stretch go. Stretch white yes. limousine. I even, I even put the hat on. Yeah, you on. put the hat on. That was unnecessary, but very, very welcome. <laughs> um, well, it really has been a whirlwind for both of us, mm. um, but certainly for the devil is in it. Um, since we... Well, we've been... We're very proud of, to have such an affiliation yeah. with you and the book um, from the, the many times you've come to the showroom, both Fulham and in Old Street. Yeah. Um, talking about you know where you were in it, um, sort of how the, how this week's chapter went, yeah. um, to the fact that we did the launch event at the showroom, and of course the little rocket ship that it's become since since yeah. the launch. So just let's just dive back a little bit for our viewers and just tell us uh, tell us about how it feels to have it out in the public and also how the launch was. Um, okay, so in Fulham. I think we had a very brief conversation about, I'm writing this book and... As you're buying a ukulele. As, as I was buying a ukulele, a, a lame horse ukulele. Very nice, very nice it is too as well. Um, and then you go to Old Street and we chat a bit more and I'm pushing my luck, saying, oh, any chance that you might, you know, maybe we could... Do. And then you very kindly offered to do the launch event. So I think in May last year we did an interview and this was a paperback rough uh, proof that you'd read um, <laughs> and the book changed a bit from there but not an awful lot um, and then in on October 11th uh, we did the launch event 50 people uh, I think kicked off at 6 30 I think you kicked up the final person out uh, about 10 30 so we overstayed well Anyway, it went on a bit within the curfew yeah exactly it was, that was always the hard thing we're doing events yeah. at the old place which yeah. you would say thanks so much we have to close the doors yeah you know. absolutely but it was great we had 50 people yeah um, great time I enjoyed it you know what's not to like um, and the amazing thing was a lot of the people didn't know North American guitar when they came and they walked into that space it was like <laughs> Jeez, this is like guitar heaven. Um, and so many people come out were sort of people who had connections with the book or whatever and were guitarists. And they said, you know, it was just you know, amazing. Great space. Uh, Mark Allen did the interview. We had a fantastic uh, guitarist, Hugh Burns, uh, who Great player. seemingly was able to play anything on demand. Uh, but it was a really, really great, great event. Um, and then, so that was the launch. Um, and I knew it was probably going to take a little bit of time, but we it picked up really, really quickly. Mm. Um, a few people very kindly bought a book at, at the event, um, and then the website opened. So what happened? So we were voted or selected as a in the London Times a Times Music Book of the Year, which was like. Wow, completely Amazing. out of the blue. Yeah. In fact, I'd read the Times that day, and a friend of mine phoned me and said, you're in the Times. Um, so I was alongside um, Shabby Company, Elton John, Prince's biography, Debbie Harry's biography, and The Devil Is In It, which was like... Oh, That's amazing. Which was, John. that was just terrific. Um, and then we've had, we've had some great, we, I've had some great reviews. Um, or the books had some terrific reviews, which is great. So we were... Um, Tony Palcastro, who 
does that acoustic. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. We'll just take a second. Absol- definitely, thank, thank you, Tony. Tony. Yes. Again, uh, absolutely amazing. I sold a book. I mean, I think Tony, this chap called Tony Bacastro, and I have to admit, I was not a follower of Acoustic um, Tuesday or Acoustic Life. Um, and so I, I think he bought a book, literally got an email from him, sent him a book. Fire, it, was, it was via the, the, the wonderful post that Jason had put up. Yeah, absolutely, yes. And isn't it, it's amazing how that kind of throws... Well, everything connected. Yeah. Um, because we haven't seen the, uh, for those viewing who haven't seen, uh, I think it was uh, Acoustic Tuesday number, well, I have it engraved in my heart, number 119. Um, and about eight minutes in, um, he said, I bought this book and I was a bit wary about it because it was a lot of money, but I'd seen Jason Costell's Facebook post. Again, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Ben, um, uh, who very kindly put a very nice thing on, on Facebook. He bought the book, didn't say, hey, I'm Tony Pocastro. Do you want to give me a big discount or do you want to send me a free book? He literally bought it. It arrived. And the first I knew about it was, was when my phone starts pinging at night. Uh, on the Tuesday that his acoustic Tuesday came out, and I'm sort of like sold one book, and then ten minutes later I've sold another, <laughs> and then a third, and then a fourth, and I'm sitting there trying to watch. I think Rick Stein on TV, and I, I said, I think something's happening. I need to go up to the, my my office or the dispatch department, as I call it, um, and uh, and I click in, and Tony's done this sort of ten minute piece. Um, it was amazing. Yeah, it was the fact that he'd used the. The book that you, the, yeah. the, the, the uh, sort of unboxing video that you did yeah. with, with Teenage Peter in yeah. the old showroom. Yeah. The, 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 interview the interview that we did in May. It was amazing. Yeah, and it was a lovely coming together because it was like so, such great support from, from Jason, which sort of kicked it off for Tony. And then, like, oh, I love those Teenage videos. They're really useful. I've learned so much from, from when, when Tony's doing this, uh, doing his, his video. Um, and then we cut into the one bit from what bit we did, and then, as you say, the unboxing that Pete very, very kindly filmed for me, and I, where I learned how to do an unboxing video. Pete taught me how to do an unboxing video. You've got to use your hand. You can't, you know, you've got to do it upside down. But uh, and that got lots of views as well, which yeah, is great. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Fretwell Journal. Uh, no, and so Tony made it an honorary member of his sort of Christmas, or Christmas as they call it, holiday gift guide, yeah. uh, which was terrific. And sales just sort of pinged through. Um, and we're not talking massive numbers. This is, as he says, it's an expensive book. I know it's an expensive book, and it's not for everybody. Um, but when people, but I think that the wonderful thing that, that, that A, the fact that he had uh, the, the, the box and the book on his desk during the actual, um, when he was doing the gift guide. Mm. But, you know, it is an expensive book, but he does go into great detail about you know how wonderful it is the paper it's printed on mm. the print you get mm. you know it's so beautifully put together and, and just the describing of when it arrived he said you know he was thinking oh, how they're going to ship this thing mm. expecting it to be chucked in a jiffy bag mm. and, but it is so beautifully packaged um and i think that aside from the book itself being wonderfully written funny educational all of the things that we mm. know it is it is a work of art in itself yeah, and that's I mean, and it is it's fabulous because when you know when we were talking years ago, and I, said, I think I'm going to make I want it to be a bit special. I remember I think I said to you I said I want a book that's good in, good enough to put next to a Costal guitar mm. or a Greenfield or or a, or a vintage Martin. I want want something that people because sort of will enjoy sort of holding. And you know there there isn't currently planned an ebook because part of what this is about is the pleasure of holding and opening, you know, a book. And it's, you know, the typography, as, as a couple of people have pointed out, you know, the, the typography has been set as, as though it was what's known as hot metal, as though it's letterpress. Um, and uh, the designer and typographer, Thraminia Rossi, she took weeks and weeks and weeks justifying each line, each word, etc., etc. Anyway, um, so that's That says so much about your, your, your passion um, as a guitar lover, a guitar nerd, mm. as a collector, and also um, just about you as a person, that how much love and energy has gone into this. It could have so easily been a paperback, and you could have yeah. easily done that. And you, yeah. at one point, you, we had that discussion. Yeah, well, yeah. well, I think I'm, I could just do this. Yeah. Um, but you didn't do that. Mm. You've gone all out, and, and definitely the right thing. And, and, and I'll talk about some of the people, but, the, but Fretwell Journal, uh, Jason Valindia, Fretwell Journal, thank you very much, Jason, and the team at Fretwell Journal, again, who I've been speaking to for a couple of years, very kindly did a, 
an interview and posted it on their website and they made it one of their holiday gift selections, um, which is terrific. And again, it, it sort of appeals to a certain sort of guitar nerd, if you will, obsessive, or someone who just loves a guitar. And I've, I'll, I'll come back to that in a second, because I've learned a lot from, from reactions to people who've bought, who've bought the book. Um, uh, so that was great. Um, and then, uh, I say, we, we talked about The Times making it one of their music books of the year. And then I'm pretty hopeful that Acoustic Guitar Magazine uh, are going to be reviewing it next uh, January, or the upcoming January. Um, so that, that's great. And it's just nice after a lot of time spent on this, and I, you know, I've been doing it for the last five years, to get sort of that sort of welcome, which is really, really great. And then you know, people like Justin Sandicor have got a copy. Yes, that's um, yeah. And uh, fantastic feedback um, fr from him. And, and you know, a few other uh, quieter celebs have, uh, have, uh, have ordered one, uh, which is great. Um, and obviously George Groon in, in Nashville, who wrote the forward, very kindly mm. wrote the forward, um, you know, his involvement. So it's, it's, it's been a really interesting, um, uh, I'm not going to use the journey word, but it has been a, uh, an interesting experience. But the, the thing that sort of brings a tear to my eye is the reaction from people who bought the book. Because you know, so I've been shipping it now since, uh, since October. Um, and I am the shipping department as well. And I, you know, I've, obviously I sign a number each book, um, and then I put a handwritten note. And I ask people, you know, if you want me to put a dedication in, then let me know, and I can write a few words. And it is interesting. Most people don't sort of bother, but then you get a letter back from someone saying, "Could you dedicate this to my son?" And uh, for him, the guitar has been such an important thing. It's been genuinely a lifesaver. It's been something that's given him direction in life, and. Um, and it's sort of the same for me. I mean, I, for, for me, the guitar is that friend. When you're feeling a bit down, um, the guitar sometimes is that, that thing that you can uh, find a bit of solace in in the wee small hours of the morning. Yeah. Um, and when you feel happy, it's the thing you want to pick up and play. And it's interesting that, it, that other people have felt that. It's, okay, I am a guitar geek, but it's, it seems so different from other instruments. Mm. I'm sure people have great relationships with clarinets and pianos and oboes and various other things but the guitar seems to be is that physical thing and the emotional thing and it's been with them all their life and you do I, i've had some fascinating letters and yeah. notes from people just really really heartfelt about how important the guitar has been to them not just acquiring them but that emotional bond that people feel with the guitar and that's a lot of what the book is, is about obviously it's you know there's a history in it and there's the story of the making of the guitar, but there's, it's why we be, have this very strong visceral relationship with the instrument. It's yeah. why we end up buying more than we possibly need, yeah. um, and why we like you know upgrading and maybe and the story of the makers is fascinating. You know, Jason's story is is an emotional story. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, there are times when I've had done interviews with Jason, and I have quite literally had to hold back a tear. Yes, because because the. It is the passion that goes into, you know, from the from the luthier stuff and the you know from, mm. from what they're doing, you know, the, the the time and the effort and the passion and the, the blood, sweat and tears that mm. goes into creating these instruments, um, that's truly humbling. Mm. And also on the side of you know, yes, it, it's 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 there for you when you're happy. I remember the day my wife and I got married in Bali, and. Um, just literally on a, you know, we were, we were planning, you know, we didn't decide not to do the big wedding in England and we just said, you know, let's just do it, get away. Um, and only a few friends were there. And there was this guy who, who was a part of the kind of like wedding package that we had. He had a, he just had a little Martin and mm. he was, him and a mate of his were just doing a couple of songs. And then literally as we had said, I do, um, and um, I'll send you some very funny pictures. I just walked out, grabbed the guitar, I started singing. Because we were just all so happy on this little tiny beach. Um, um, and yeah, I've got customers who, um, who are big, you know, big collectors. And one guy in particular that just sprung to mind as, uh, as you were saying that is that he, he uses the guitar. He's in a very, very stressful job, mm. um, incredibly demanding. Um, and takes you know vast amounts of his of, of this the amounts of finite amount of time he has in a day, and every single morning before he you know has his breakfast, he will sit down and he will religiously play 
for 30 minutes mm. not to practice to release to yeah, to absolutely. get out of to get uh, to get out of the you know at the end of the day to get out and in the beginning of the day to get into the mm. day so it's an amazing instrument we're in you know cliche but you know in this digital immediate world we we sort of live in something made of wood and steel that that as analog an instrument as you can get I, we know where you can plug it in and there's a room full of amazing plug-in electric guitars in the you, you mean in, you mean in, in, the, in the electric in, room. in the electric, in the electric room. Room. <laughs> just over there out of shot um, but the thing as a you know as a uh, as an acoustic guy it is that thing it's you know it's it's a, the analog instrument and it is that thing I use it for that you know when I'm feeling a bit sort of like wound up that's the thing that sort of like like releases now you, now you now have something in common with Bill Gates because Bill, when Bill Gates got married and I think he got married I think a slightly Ireland, different wedding it, well no you'd <laughs> be surprised actually except that what he did as they walk along the beach I think actually maybe he was going to propose to uh, his wife and he'd arrange for Willie Nelson to be different walking wedding. along the beach <laughs> Playing Willie Nelson, playing Trigger. We turned up in a pink, we turned up in a it was a wedding package. We turned up in a pink car. To, so we very very different. But it's it's not not too far apart. Two weddings shifted by about four hundred million dollars. <laughs> exactly. but, but anyway, no. But it's the the emotional thing is is it's it's really interesting. And I should say the 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 Jason um, thing is fascinating. A couple of people have bought books from me, and they've said we bought it just because of Jason. And a couple of guitarists, they just follow Jason. Obviously, Jason does an enormous amount of work for vets and for a lot of charities. There's numerous charities he's involved with. Yeah. But these are people who work with Jason and, and are sort of supporting. They just wanted to support something that Jason obviously was fascinated. So that's, you know, that's been great. But the, as I say, the connectivity is, is amazing. And I think that, that acoustic Tuesday was was fascinating because it sort of linked back to so many things, you know, mm. back to May, back to our relationship, whatever. So it's been, you know, it it's it's been terrific, and you know, we're the books are sort of gently selling. Um, I think clearly it's not for everybody. Um, some people, you know, see a book as a, a sort of I want to read it and toss it away or throw it to a charity shop. Um, but it's you know, for me, it's much more than a book. It is that tactile experience of you know feeling the pages and and, and and sort of people do get that and that's the sort of feedback we're getting and it getting. must be it must be incredibly emotional on your side uh, to receive these letters back from people yeah uh, who absolutely have, who, have, who have received the book and read it um, and um, so, so so what I guess it's going to be just continuous you're shipping worldwide I know that we we are acting as um, a distributor for you, yeah, so we've yeah, got so we've got a, we can buy a book from you, which is great. We've got um, a finite amount of books. Yeah, um, this is a limited run. Yeah, it's three hundred, um, uh, and there. I think last week, no, no, early this week, I shipped I shipped the fiftieth. Um, so um, they're going, um, and as they say, when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, but you won't you won't plan on doing another one like this. No, this I, be... I, I sort of. It's been a big financial venture for me, um, many thousands of pounds because it's expensive uh, yeah. to produce. I mean, it's the the batch I had made um, took about three and a half months to produce, um, and I remember um, I mentioned it in the fretboard journal interview that you know when I decided that I was going to have these. Um, what are called sort of tip-ins, uh, colour plates that are sort of glued in, pasted in by, by hand. There's 16 of them. And the producer of the book... And they are the ones that are also... Yeah, and there's a separate set, yeah. which, amazing, there's a fantastic... In fact, one of your customers um, who, uh, who bought the book, I think it was like the first order, literally, you mentioned it on the website, and then he immediately phoned you and said, I want, I've got to have one, I've got to have one. Um, and he's already got his sent them off to be framed because yeah. uh, that, that's what they're designed well not designed for they're designed as keepsakes or being framed um, and he's got a, a, in his guitar room he's got a, uh, a stand with the book on which is lovely oh. that's, that's so sweet um, and he's been so I won't mention his name but he's been so supportive and so effusive and so excited about the book but what, what, what is interesting is because I you know when you order a book I sort of send a note to the, the person who's ordered it saying Okay, I'm wrapping it today, and I am the dispatch department as well as the uh, publisher. Um, and I sort of 
ship it, I'd do a handwritten note, whatever. And the, the reaction back from me, it's so nice to get a response. And then I, I follow the, I track the books as, as they get shipped. So, and I normally sort of send a note to a customer saying, it looks like it's just arrived in Japan. So I've been selling to Japan, I think Australia, a lot to North America, uh, Switzerland, Germany, France, quite a few in France. Um, so it is worldwide, but there again, worldwide is sort of relatively easy these days. But I am, I'm first in terms with the guys in my post office. Well, that's so, important. So I, you know, I wrap each one, uh, I ship each one personally, and I send the notes, and, and people appreciate that. It's amazing. You get that you know, very, very nice feedback. So it's been terrific. So yeah, there are only 300 of them, uh, which sounds like, by now, I'll be disappointed, but there, there are 300 of them. Um, and I don't think I could um, afford to actually go for a reprint. Um, and I don't know how many customers there are in the world who, who want one of these. Thank well, you. I've got to say, John, um, you know, amazing journey. And we are just so proud to be a part of it and can't wait to see how it grows. I think that you will find you will have people knocking on your door for a reprint, which you'll probably have to deal with. Yeah, I might stage. do a different version of it, I think. Mm. Um, but for now, if you're interested in grabbing a copy of The Devils in it, then please don't hesitate to call us. You can call us on 0207 835 5597 or you can go to our website, thenorthamericanguitar.com. Uh, there is a lot of information on John on the site, the book. Um, but John, if you want to go directly to John, where should they go to find you? It's tricky. It's called the Afarian Press. Afarian was a sort of 16th century predecessor of the guitar, like a, like a sit-in. So O-P-H- O-P-H-A-R-I-O-N press.com or search John Stubbings, The Devil Is In It. Um, it's not available on Amazon or Waterson's or Aid Books or whatever. It's only available either from my site or from the North American Guitar. Be- beautifully independent. Yes. Handmade, artisanal, small oh, yes. scale, what, what perfectly formed, just like us. Merry Christmas, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for you your support. So really much appreciate it. For coming in. So for more information, God, that was a lovely interview. First one uh, in the new showroom. Um, so for more information on the finest Luthier built instruments, then please do subscribe to this channel. But like I said, for more information on the wonderful Mr. John Stubbings and this remarkable book, The Devil Is In It, please don't hesitate. To get in touch. Can I play a guitar? <laughs>